The end is near. The end is near. The end is near. I don't know. Is it that bad? I think it's kind of endearing. Welcome back to the Almost Side Show, everyone. My name is Adam, and I'm joined by, as always, by Terry. Terry, how's it going? Welcome back to the Almost Side Show, where we're breaking down Breaking Bad. Break down a Breaking Bad. I've hit That's everything, but I've somehow messed it up. I was going to say, you, you, you said all the right things, just in the wrong order. Hi. Right. Uh, it, things are going well. Uh, Hi, how are you? <laughs> man, we're getting down to the end here. End times. Yeah. The end times. This and... is season four, episode 12 of Breaking Bad, End Times, which debuted October 2nd, 2011. What a high of last week's episode, uh, and which was called Crawl Space. And now we're back here with End Times. Uh, what was going to happen? That was the big question. And where would they have gone? We got a couple things that I was really happy to see. And probably I kind of mentioned that I wanted to see kind of happen here. And we kind of got a kind of a point of reference of timeline as well. I think this is a good key point of timeline because apparently he's been working with Gus for about a year, roughly. Well, he said he's been living in a uh, death door for a year with at the beginning. I think that's I don't know. It's cancer. Okay, well, uh, yes, time frame is still up in the air, folks. It's still up in the <laughs> air. But what's not up in the air is that we're going to break this episode down as best we can. And this was a really good one. Uh, definitely a great follow-up episode. And it leaves the finale right there for this season. Really stoked for that. But this episode's damn good, too. It is. Well, let's do it. Let's break this let's do down. Our synopsis of Breaking Bad, Season 4, Episode 12, entitled End Times. Walt is backed into a corner. What happens next? Well, first, the DEA takes the family into protection at Hanks, but Walt refuses to go. He's the only one they really want, and as long as he's there, everyone's in danger. Walt contemplates suicide, while Hank talks Gomi into checking out the laundry. They don't seem to find anything, while Jesse and Tyrus get real quiet. Gus tries to so show Jesse again why Walt needs to go, but Jesse can't sign off. Instead, he hears from Saul what's been happening with Walt, while Saul is covering his tracks, thinking it's all coming crashing down. When, oh no, then, then he gets a call from Andrea. Brock is sick and not getting better. Oh, and Jesse is missing his ricin cigarette. He tells Andrea he might be poisoned, then rushes to Walt's house to accuse him of poisoning Brock. Walt thinks Gus did it, knowing Jesse would blame Walt and finally get him to sign off on his killing. Jesse believes Walt's theory. He goes back to the hospital and tells Tyrus he won't cook till Brock is better. If Gus wants him to cook, he can tell him himself. So Gus shows up at the hospital. When he sees how serious Jesse is, he tells him to take the rest of the week off. Meanwhile, Walt has been building a bomb. He's waiting for Gus to return to his car so he can take him out. Gus, on his way to his car, realizes how he has exposed himself. He abandons his car and walks away. Walt is once again defeated. So what now? Maybe blue, but it's the bomb. Maybe blue, but it's the bomb. That Volvo yeah. is blue, and it bomb yeah uh, this was a good episode uh first the, the ending here i was like how did gus know but then how you just worded it it makes sense now because he uh he did leave himself a little exposed he should have left the he should have left mike's mike's guy or no tyrus's guy back at the car uh, he should have been on car duty but i uh, guess uh but anyway uh this was a really cool good episode i i liked how they were definitely uh you know 10 moves ahead of uh, Walt the entire time. 
uh, and then using Andrea and Brock uh, against in the pond. And I, I was I was like watching. I was like, man, he's done kids before. Like he's taken out kids, and he's okay with kids being part of the business, even though he tries to have that nice guy facade and say, oh, we're, we're done using kids. But it wouldn't. Uh, yeah, it did. Obviously, he he went after. I don't know how he necessarily did it, but he knew about that rice and cigarette, which is another um, kind of a fascinating thing there. Um, I, my first thought was, oh, he Brock smoked it, but then I was like, oh, that didn't make much sense either. And I was like, no, that's no, not 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 uh, innocent little Brock who like like Sonic. No, not not that kid. Yeah. Uh, but I also like. I was like, why did he think it was Walt all of a sudden? Why would Walt go after the kid? Just blind, emotional rage. That's what it what it is. And uh, Walt's like, why would I have any motivation killing a kid? Like, well, the who, only who, reason he did it is because he was the only other one that knew about it. Yeah, that, like, that's true. When, when something happens, he goes, well, who else knows it's there? Only one person. Yeah, true. But it is uh it's funny because we do get a little bit of uh Brian Cranston uh, doing his Joker laugh again, like on like just like rolling on the f- the floor again. He's like, "Why are you laughing?" I thought that was a really funny line. That was good. Uh and the opening as well, just the dynamic with Skylar and Walt. It's like, "Yeah, there was a time we, to get out, but the time has passed." Oh, great burn. Great burn because mm-hmm. when you're stuck between a rock and a binnacle, I think he's gonna lose every time. Oh. Um, anyway, or well, actually, yeah, was... kind of looked like the Rock one last episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Rock did. <laughs> and stuck Come between on. a rock and a Benicky. The yeah. Rock beat the, the Benicky. The Rock a, beat it. Yeah, that's what it looked like. It was an act of God. It's an act of God. Uh, yeah, this was this was a really uh, yeah, this was a, this was a good follow up episode. And I liked how they did bring some of the uh, these the score from the finale or that ending of the last episode into this episode a little bit too with the confrontation with uh, Walt and Jesse too, which is uh, which is cool. And uh, just seeing how frantic Walt and they are right now to try to take out Gus because a lot hangs in the balance. So it's a uh, yeah. Only we can only I can only imagine what the finale is going to be like. Yeah, I I mean this is we've talked about this whole season has been a game of chess, right? And after last episode, it's like, yeah, you, you can see that checkmate is coming and you can see, you know, you've got, you've got one that's cornered that is just in complete desperation mode here and like barricading himself inside his house. And then it, Right, this whole thing kind of gives that. I I have a moment where I could play some offense. Right, there's that last ditch hail mary effort. I'm gonna build a bomb. <laughs> it with the faulty walkie talkie. Um, yeah, that it. There's he he had he had a chance, right? But it, it's it. You're right. It's just fascinating to watch. This game of chess, like I said, it, it feels like Gus is 10 moves ahead of him at all times. And Walt is just praying for a chance to play some catch up. Good point. And, you know, it re- we realize how short uh, staffed Gus is at the moment because Mike is currently down. Because why wasn't the White House being watched? Even if you're not going to make your move, at least think that you're going to make a move and have somebody posted outside that house. Like mm-hmm. keep and watch. Yeah, Gus had be. a guy. Yeah, you're not it. So you, you're yeah. not the guy. That's why did that. It, it, that's why we didn't know where the the where Walt was going. But then uh, Gus has had. He knew. He's like, wait, I don't have, I don't have Walt's uh, location. And of course, like, I thought for sure, like he's gonna. There's gonna be like a reflection off his head. Like, come on. Like <laughs> Gus is gonna see him. Like poking his head out or he's going to see the binoculars there. I, I, I thought having his glasses on the top of his head is like something's getting a glare. Yeah. He's going to see it. But I don't think, but I don't no. think he did. I think he just kind of knew. Like, like, hold on. Chess game here. Move, move, move. Yeah, that would have been a good time to do it. No, nope, yeah. leaving. Yeah. 
I also thought too it'd be kind of it was so f- crazy if they did it's a typical like movie trope though it's like they're in binoculars and they're like oh there's the guy when you get over here like they're looking over here and they come back he's still not paying attention look over here mm-hmm. and look back and gus is just staring exactly where walt's at and it's like oh crap he saw me like that would have been such a trope and, True. It, and that's not that's not what happened and this what happened here is it's like no gus is just that smart he's he's playing the long game here he's seen he's been playing this game for a long time so we kind of can see possible scenarios, even if they may or may not be true, which is cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Tyrus and the All other right. guys is like, okay, well, we're walking again, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Tyrus the errand boy. That was a that was a nice little stab that Jesse Ooh. had. Tyrus really tried to bite his lip. I don't know this guy. I don't know this guy. Stranger mm-hmm. danger in the hospital. All right, what's the best scene? Oh, we have to go to Gomi here. We got to go to Gomi. <laughs> Button up Gomi and, Den- and Dennis. Uh, talking. Gomi has a story to tell about some heroin in a chef's apron. apron and some bigwig's uh, son got caught with uh, some heroin. He's not a and- chef. He's a glorified burger flipper. Yeah, exactly. So great story, great delivery. Got that guy convinced. Uh, like, okay, well, we'll do this right now instead of doing it uh, the long way, the hard way. Mm-hmm. That's just a great scene. Gomi shines it, through, even though he doesn't find anything. Even though he kind of stares exactly where the freaking, uh, you know, meth lab would be, but didn't mm-hmm. see it. Yeah, and, and what I love about that is you see him stop for a second, and be like, hmm, "What would Hank do?" Can I tell you a story? And it's like, the, this is a total Hank move, right? Total Hank move. Uh, of just like going into the story. He's like, I'm just going to tell the story and I'm going to build it up the way the way my buddy Hank would do because he is the king at doing this. So, yeah, that, that's a great king call. Yes, yeah. Um, my, my, my best scene is, is the showdown between Walt and Jesse. I mean, yeah, it's just... Like there's there's several great scenes in this episode where I mean that was one of the shorter synopses I've done because just not much happens in this episode, right? It's just little snippets here and there as we're just kind of playing our chess game. But Jesse walking in on Walt and just like, why did you do it? Why did you do it? And Walt coming to the realization and Everything in that moment flips. It's like that. It's such a good scene. It's such a good scene. And uh, yeah. The intensity of that scene. And Aaron Paul is on fire. Yeah, he's definitely stepped up his acting. And you can tell like this is where like this is where I win Emmys. This is where I do it. These seasons right. right here. Yeah, that's a good, that's a great one. The other one I thought is just the opening scene, Skylar and Walt, um, and and they're packing and the time has passed. Good yeah. line. And and Walt just kind of looks at her and says, "I'm resorting myself to the fact that I'm about to die," mm-hmm. and it, that's that, that's where that's where we're at now. So, yeah. Good call. I like that scene too. I thought there was a lot of good back and forth and a lot of guilt from both parties, really. I, I would think, and just proves that they weren't communicating, and it kind of bit them both in the in the butt um, because they like we could have been out of here safe, scot free, but nope, not anymore. We don't have any mo- the money, and Binicky's not even. I don't. I don't think you even know Binicky's dead at this point yet. Which is another fascinating layer because like, what's her reaction going to be? I, uh, however, I don't want to. I don't care what the reaction actually is, but uh, just kind of an interesting little thing because it happened has happened so quickly from yeah. episode to episode. So haven't haven't gotten into that any further yet. All right. Okay, well, there we go then. The Ken wins Bogdan Award. Uh, well, I, I thought ricin for for starters, um, but then it's probably the chef's the the glorified burger flipper's father. Ah, the the senator. Senator, yeah. 
the, the bogging down the, the process. Mystery, the mystery phantom senator. You you know yeah. who you're who I'm probably talking about. You probably <laughs> understand. That's a good one. Uh, I thought there was one clear answer here, and it's Saul. I mean, good old good old HT in the office there. Uh, I call it. I think it's endearing. <laughs> I think it's endearing. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's that, we would call that. That's red. That's definitely a red. That's on the on the harassment uh-huh. scale. It's a red. The, she just sits there and takes it, though. I that that's kind of the best part. Imagine is, how much imagine how much dirt she has on him. That's the that's oh, the thing. so much, so much. And I think I've heard that she pops up a lot in Better Call Saul too. Like oh, she's God. not a she's not a new Gus employee. Well, that, that's so, gonna be. She's one of those elite employees. Mm-hmm. She she's a good a good candidate for minor character of the of the episode for sure. Mm-hmm. The Pink Man Stick Man Award. The cigarette, Skylar's cigarette, because it mm-hmm. literally goes in their mouth. Uh, yeah, there's not really good options here for this one. Um, but yeah, probably the cigarette would be the the best Stick Man. Probably a menthol. Honestly, um, but yeah, or those guys that definitely carry big rifles, so they're maybe you know probably get an end. That is a good point. That is a good point. Just casually sitting there with your automatic rifle sitting on the lawn furniture. Um, that that's a that's a good one. I didn't have anything written down, but I really like that one. I'll go with that. Yeah, the guards with the giant with the giant guns. Uh, the best new face. Hey, that's Danny Trejo award. Whoever Dennis is, that's the that's the guy, right? Dennis, yes. Yeah, got to go with Dennis, the laundry manager. Dennis. It just it just proves that Gus has a way of hiring just really stand up managerial candidates. We get that girl at Las Polos Hermanos. We have this guy here, just really good, solid employees. Yeah, that's a good one. I really like Dennis too. Uh, that's what I'd written down. If I'm gonna go with someone else. I'll go with, uh, all right. So there was a DEA agent. Yeah, the guy that, who brought um, the dog, right or no? No, not even the guy who brought the dog. The so there were like the two guys that were out of the car that took Skyler to Hanks. One of them, the one who was sitting shotgun, looked like Hector. Like it looked like Dead Eyes. Like are we are we reusing an actor here? I don't think we did, but it it really looked like Put some it, shades on him. No one will pay attention. No one will know. Put some exactly, shades on. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, Gomi minor character award could be Gomi this episode. It's the first time we've it been able to say be. that in a while. Yeah, that's true. Got to go with the baby. We have never mentioned the baby here, but the baby. Uh, what's the baby's name? Holly. Yeah, Holly White. Holly White. Uh, gives two one line of like one like off thing really like quick little moment of uh levity when just setting up a car seat's really hard, <laughs> especially if you don't if you have you're out of practice. Great scene with the DE guy trying to set it up and Skylar trying to explain it to him how to do it, and just a touching moment between Holly and her and her father. Like she's crying and he's just kind of like this is gonna be the last time I see you, and just Skylar just kind of sitting there too. It's like I hope not. Yeah, it's just a beautiful little line. We don't really see Holly too much in the show, but I think, if anything, that just little minor moment, that little sweet kind of moment. Granted, she's probably crying because she's like, hey, I don't, I'm not getting paid for this. Let's go. <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, but at the same time, it's just, a, you know, being a father, too. It's like that. that's a tough. That's definitely something tough there. So having that kind of like bonding experience in that little scene is good. Yeah, so. that's good. Well, and I, it might come up later, but setting up the car seat is it, a great midlife crisis mm-hmm. moment, too. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. I'm going to go with, um, instead of going with the baby, I'm going to go with the one that looks like he may have eaten a baby or two, and that's Huel. Huel. Um, uh, <laughs> Reasonably. <laughs> come on, Frisky. <laughs> yeah, let him in. Let him in. Uh it, like uh, I feel like Saul apologizes more for Huel than than anybody. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm going Huel as my minor character, mm, reasonably. Um, 
He's still getting trusted with security detail, even though he obviously was so effective in security detail with uh, yeah. with yeah, Benny. So we can tell who won on, on comedy tour that's this week. Yeah, Bill Burr. He was on tour. Oh, <laughs> really? I I don't know. I'm just that's my guess. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he's right. definitely a better security guard than this. Huel. This is true. This is true. The cowhouse dumbest thing said. This is a tough one. Uh, yeah, not Colonel Sanders over here. Talking about Gus. That's a that's mm -hmm. a fun one. Uh, but I think the the one that I I have down. I think it definitely is the best one. It's called protective custody. How Skylar delivers that. It's just uh, it's great at the beginning of the show. It's like, why? No, we have to go. It's called protective custody. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's just how it's her delivery and how it's said. It's it's dumb. So that's my that's my choice. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I've got. I, I've said it a couple times already. I think it's endearing. H T. Yeah. Uh, that and uh, that, that that's dumb. And the other one is. Uh, why didn't they make him get in the car? Because it's not Nazi Germany. <laughs> How many times? Are you going to compare things to Nazi Dude, not, Germany? <laughs> like freaking John Goodman and Big Lebowski. We're not a freaking nom. <laughs> yeah. The the uh, the other one that was great is uh when when Jesse and Tyrus have to be quiet and Jesse just goes, I'm gonna go on the record. This uh this blows. <laughs> this, blows. <laughs> this blows, man. Uh, this Perfect, perfect Jesse moment there. Perfect Jesse moment. All right. Any problems? Any any outdated stuff you want to mention? You want to shout yeah, out? I have two. I think the windows being rolled down in the protective custody vehicles with the people they're trying to protect, kind of a horrible idea. Mm. Those windows should be rolled up to at least to, to Fair uh, point. can't see them. Um, and how did Jesse get into the ICU at night? That's another great question. Get yeah, the, after he keeps he, uh, sneaking in. How does he? How does he do that? Um, I don't know. Waiting for someone to walk out and then walk in. Th those. That's how yeah. he got in the first time. Well, yeah, but then they like, "Can you buzz me in?" That's what Andrea says. Can you buzz me in? But then all of a sudden he comes into a different door to get in, and they're like, they're not even like upset. They're like, "Mr. Pinkman, for the last time, like we told you, like." Well, because he's not putting up a fight. He's not. He's not he's freaking not out. He's just the standing time. there. How did he get in? That's the, that's the crazy part. Best new face also could have been that nurse. Oh, that's like true. She, she, Worst performance. Solid too. character there. Oh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Mr. Pinkman, we told you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. I'm calling him. Calling security. But but see, I'm I'm okay with that because she was just like de-escalating the situation. Well, there wasn't a situation to escalate or to de-escalate because he was he's just um, standing there and he wasn't putting up a fight. He was just standing there. It's like, oh, come on, come on, guy. You, you can't do this. We can't do this anymore. You can't be here. Are, are you going to are you going to make it bad? You're obviously not wanting to or else you'd be screaming at me right now. So, yeah. Yeah, good point. Good point. Fair point. All right. Anything else? Are you good? What is everything? Okay. Oh, Midlife crisis moment. Car seats. They're, they're tough. I, Car seats they, are pretty yeah. tough. Car seats are... Yes. Car seats. Car seats suck. And then... um, Yeah, look at being hurt at an older age. No matter how uh, cool you are... A neck brace and a bandage on your nose <laughs> ain't looking cool, bud. Mm -mm. There's mm -mm. no way. But very necessary, right? But very necessary. Like, All right, I'm going to take the, the neck brace. I'm going to take the bandage if that's what I need, even though it looks horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you know, you know. Um, yeah, that's what, that's the two things that I... That's definitely what I have. Yeah, car, car seats. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward I, to we, it. Today. When yeah, we, car seats are no longer a thing. We took the car seat out to uh, have the, our youngest go to her aunt and uncle's house over the weekend. 
and then we're like, oh no, we have to put that thing back in. How did we do it? And uh, right. yeah, got re-educated on how to do it. So that's always fun. All right, uh, my midlife crisis moment is Walt. When you when you figure something out and you just have to like laugh because it's like, oh, I figured it out. I figured it out. <laughs> oh, that that was a good one. That we're, ten, we're ten. We're ten steps behind. We're ten steps yeah. behind. Uh huh. But just just having that moment of, oh, 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 you're good. You're good. Right. That that moment of realization making you laugh. I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm not even mad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. I think we're. I think we're there. LVP. I'm, I'm saying it again. Hospital security. There's, there's no way in an actual hospital that this guy is getting in to that area. Not to mention, like, Walt being able to plant a bomb in the hospital parking lot. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Uh, I'm going to say my LVP is walkie-talkies. <laughs> and Because, okay, like, I think that this this may have been, like, the best scenario for Walt. Because you can you imagine... If Gus had gotten in the car, the walkie-talkie wouldn't work from five feet away. It took like 10 seconds for it to finally activate whatever was going on. And he was going to expect it to work like a quarter mile away. <laughs> yeah, pretty stupid. He was two buildings over. Yeah, like, really? Like, Luckily, we didn't have yeah. to test this theory. I can tell you one thing. I was in a hotel. We were last year. We stayed at a hotel, and I was trying to like lock. I can see my vehicle in the parking garage from our hotel room. I was like, "Let me see if this key works. It's a lock." Nope, didn't get, didn't go that far. And that distance for this bomb was even further. So, yeah, doubt that I would have worked, but still made for intense watching. Yeah. All right, MVP. I've got Gomi. <laughs> His, his, yeah, Gomi. I, I thought at first I was going to be like, okay, Gomi, like, worst performance because that, I don't know. I don't know how uh, how believable that, that whole thing is. But I'm like, wait a second. He's supposed to be bad at this. And that he moment, he's, yeah, he's trying to do a bad Hank impression and does a really good job at doing a bad Hank impression. Mm-hmm. That is true. Good point. It's a good one. Uh, I think MVP would have to go to that's a tough one because it's like who do we uh, go me is pretty much probably the, the right answer here. Um, But I would probably say Gus, in this sense, because he's still like he's still ten moves ahead, and you basically are working off a theory that it is Gus who did this, which we probably all know that he did it because of his track record. But having him like walk back to the car and like, wait a second, something's off here. Wait, and he's like playing the calc playing this like calculated game in his head, and you're like, no. We need to walk, boys. Let's get going. And then the guys don't even say anything. They just, okay, we just trust him. He, he must know what's mm -hmm. up. I think that's a pretty, uh, you know, MVP type of moment, even though it doesn't work out too well for our, our anti-hero of Walt here in this situation. But at the same time, it's a, it's a pretty good little moment that, have, that we're, we're still not quite up to the mastermind yet. That is Gus. Yeah, that's good. Good point. So. All right. We're going to talk about what's next in a second. But first, the Walter White body count remains at one Emilio, one Crazy Eight, one Ken Wins Car, one Custodian's Career, one Tuco Hideout, one Lock, one Uneaten Burrito, one Paper Towel Holder, rot, one Backdoor to Jesse's House, one Love of Jesse's Life, a few burned $100 bills, one Pepperoni Pizza, one Career in Education, one Meth Making RV. One beginning of a galeful friendship. One fly. Two kid killing drug dealers. One Gail Bedecker. One fateful bottle of wine. Three laundry worker jobs. One Walter Jr. dream car. And one Pinkman living room. 
and, and possible opportunity to kill Gus. Mm. No, it's not, it doesn't work. That doesn't quite work. And the Jesse ass yeah. kick count remains at 9.5. Of course, it's a 0.5 for self emotional ass kicking. Uh, and he now gets his ass kicked once every 4.7 episodes. So hmm. I will say this before you start th- talking about what you think is going to happen next. Possibly more than any other episode of this that we have done, I have had to hold my tongue on so many different things uh, to not give anything away of what's coming up in the season finale. Like mm-hmm. it, it is, there's oh, like this season finale is just, it's so good. What's what's about to come is so good. And We'll we'll talk next week about exactly, yeah, about a lot. We'll talk next it's, week about a lot. That's all I'm gonna say. It's about to go down. All right. Uh, so the season finale. No, you, you don't even know. But what's getting? What do you think's happening? Yeah, what do you think's happening? Well, obviously, I think they meet up for chicken and they, they talk out their differences. I think that's pretty pretty obvious there. Um, now, uh, I'm just glad that. Really, I'm just glad that Jesse and Walter are on the same plan for the same team again. Um, I don't want to see Brock die. Like I could see a situation where that just pushes, you know, Jesse even further, kind of into like mad madness. I guess like that would be a, that would be a huge loss, Brock, because that's obviously another kid that we're actually getting some. We've got some screen time to, for. But again, like it's it's so hard to predict what's going to happen in these next two episodes because I know we have another season coming, and I I don't see where we close the Gus chapter quite yet. Like it it doesn't make sense that it ends right here at all. I, I but it's like we have a whole we have even more episodes next year, so it's like. What where it's the hard part. It's like where what's the end game for all the characters wrapping up? And it's we have still have a whole nother season. That's why like this last couple episodes when you asked me this, it's it's becoming tougher and tougher to actually get an idea because I feel like the showrunners are really keeping everything kind of close to the chest and they're making you they're they're specifically filming the episodes and pacing the episodes in a specific way so that way you have no idea what's gonna happen. To keep you kind of guessing, which is the brilliance of the show, and I guess the I guess the true MVP is the I guess <laughs> there's still the knowledge of not knowing what's happening, which is kind of you know I may know how it it all comes to an end, but I don't know how we get there. Like I, I've seen a final like image, but I, at some point I have no idea how we get to get there. So it's everything is like still like fresh and new in in the the brain here. So it's 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 leaving me guessing every week and it's like I, uh, every big reveal like even happened right now. I'm like, Oh my goodness. He's thinking Jess or Walt did this. It's like, Oh God, is he, this is going to, is he going to shoot him? Like it's, it's, it's keeping me on the edge of my seat every week, which is, it makes for these episodes being like that, just that, that more fascinating where it's even harder. Like I, before I was like picking up like the crazy dumb things said and these crazy flaws, but now it's like harder. I'm like, I'm having to scrape the bottom of the barrel. Cause I'm like not really paying attention to, those type of categories i'm like trying i'm like too engaged in the show and i have to go back and rethink mm-hmm. stuff so that's the hard part where before i was like i was just able to like pause it and stop it i don't want to pause now because it's i don't want to miss anything and even when like a kid walks in the room like i pause it i'm like okay and then i rewind it back a little bit so i can watch more of it uh but i guess essentially I, you know what though what the hell uh tyrus is dying in this next episode if somebody has yeah. to die, there's somebody. I think so, there has to be. A, we have to see a death of some kind. We have to see somebody, something happening at the very end. Um, I, I just don't see. I don't think it's Gus. Not not, not yet. If you know, not yet. Uh, so, but if it had to be somebody, we will see Mike. I think next week we have. Well, no, we won't see Mike because I think we're still living in that week period. So we probably won't see Mike until season one of next season. Or season five, episode one, next year, uh, next 
time we are, we're on there. Uh, but yeah, I think if anybody is finally taken out, I think Tyrus could be the guy. But again, I'm not confident and I don't have any <laughs> reasons to basis, but I do know that Wendy has drinken another <laughs> a, a root beer. Oh, that's a good call. That is a good call. Somewhere, somehow, Wendy is having a root beer. That is one of the few things we can rely on. Confidently say, yes. Confidently say, exactly. Like, like I said, that the, this is going to be one of our shorter episodes in a while because I, I can't say anything more. Like I've, I've not. I don't said want you to. Because <laughs> I, I, I can't. I, I can't. These these two episodes tie together very very nicely. So, oh, wouldn't that be awesome if he accidentally like he hit the he's like dang dang it I can't believe I messed my chance and the car blows up to start the episode off. That would be uh, pretty funny. And Gus and Gus slow motion walks with the explosion behind him. That'd be kind of a cool shot. But that would be something would we be would do at the the, fair, the end of the episode. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Let's 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 wrap it up, man. Because I think this. Uh, we're gonna. We, I don't want to talk you into a corner, and I don't want to put you in that spot. So, um, I think next week we we may have company, and it will be the season finale, and uh, we will do one last thing before we end this episode, Terry, and that is what breakdown of Breaking Bad. That wasn't it. But this is it. This is it. Sit and spin.